Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're at. Uh, welcome to Aquarium Thoughts Live. I'm Dave. Uh, today I am going to probably be ruffling a few fins. Uh, basically, this topic, this subject might be a little controversial for some. Um, but I'll get to that. I will have to fix my audio issue here. So give me one second here. Uh, apparently my uh, phone is still playing audio. So I have a slight echo, in, at least on my side. So I'll be right back in one second. Hello, so let's see if that fixes the issue. Apparently not. <laughs> hello, Anthony's Fishy Friends, and hello, Unfiltered Aquarist. Congratulations uh, goes out to Unfiltered Aquarist. He actually hit the 500 milestone. Don't have to say the S word on here, but <laughs> he finally re reached his 500 milestone. So congratulations on that, Unfiltered Aquarist. Um, <laughs> hello, Learning into Fish Keep. How are you, how you doing out there today? Um, but anyways, today I'm going to be talking about uh, water parameters in social media and do and basically it, it deals with when people go on social media, whether it be Facebook, Reddit or anywhere, and they start asking for help. Um, basically, do they really need to know water parameters? Um, this might be a little touchy for some. So I, I'm going to preface this. A little bit first, uh, basically saying I am not advocating bad water parameters. I'm not advocating not water testing. I'm not advocating that you shouldn't give the water parameters. Uh, but basically, I just want to put it out there that my thoughts on the whole issue. So <laughs> probably going to wait until a little bit more people show up. But... But what are your thoughts on water parameters? That's what I'm going to get into on this as well. Um, but first, I just want to know I do have some news that I'm going to be putting out there. Um, but I'm going to wait until the end of this to actually say anything about this. So stay stay tuned until the end. If you have to, watch the review, watch the watch the rewatch, and get to the end on that and watch that. Uh, so you can hear the important news that I have coming up. Um, not prepared fully yet to unveil everything. I'm still kind of working out the details on it, so stay tuned for that. So I'm going to go ahead and get into this water parameters talk in social media. Um, so let's get it. Let's get to this. Um, I don't know if you ever follow Facebook or Reddit, uh, the forum groups on aquariums there. Uh, one thing that's been going on recently was people basically pointing out, okay, you're asking for help. We need your water parameters. What are your water parameters? <laughs> popping back before between you and Bob. Is Bob live streaming right now or is that a video right now? But I know he, uh, I just got the notification from Bob that he had a video. Um, <laughs> unfiltered Aquarist, I think, leave water parameters alone unless you see a visual issue. Okay, yeah, I, I'll probably be getting to that in, in a bit, um, but uh, let's see. Oh, Bob's live. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, maybe that's maybe that's where everyone's at right now. So I I might actually just wait until maybe. Um, uh, let's see here. Not gonna lie, haven't done water testing in six months or so. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I rarely do. I rarely rarely really do water testing unless I think it's an issue. 
Um, I really don't think that you have to do it so much. I mean, eventually you do get to the grind of things where you know where your water parameters are going to be. Um, but primarily what I want to talk about is um, you, you go you go onto these social media sites. You basically see persons asking for help. Next thing you know, person pops up, okay, what are your water parameters? We need to know your water parameters before we can help you. Which basically, it brings up to basically this right here. This is one of the social media posts I did say, I see. It should be standard when asking for help to include all take parameters. Also, all newbies should purchase a master test kit. Um, I really don't think it needs to go this far. I really don't even think when you're asking for help that you really need to add your water parameters. Uh, mainly being because I know a lot of stuff, you really don't even need the water parameters to actually help the person. Uh, I think a lot of it is, it's just, it's just people just saying, okay, it's, they're taking the easy way out trying to help them. Okay, include your water parameters. Later on in the post, you don't see that person even, even offering any help to the person. It's like, okay, why did you ask for first place? Hello, Fishia and Fantanatics. Uh, welcome to joining here. Uh, I am talking about water parameters in social media. Primarily talking about this issue right here where basically people demand water parameters when a person's asking for help. Um, I really don't think it's really required to actually help the person. And uh, a lot of times people just ask for the water parameters and not offer the help. And there's a lot of issues with fish that water parameters is not a direct cause of the illness. What, what use is the water parameters in that? rather than just shaming the person saying, oh, and I, I've seen this as well where, okay, what's your raw pra water parameters? And they come up with like zero, zero and uh, like 40. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, yeah, there's your problem. You have nitrates when they have a parasite hanging off the fish where water parameters has nothing to do with water uh, parasite hanging off the side of the fish. Now water parameters can be an indirect cause of the fish being the sick, the sick fish. But it's not directly the direct cause. It's just an indirect cause. It's like breaking your leg in a car accident. The direct cause of your broken leg is a car accident. Now, the indirect cause could be you driving your car blindfolded down the street at 60 miles an hour. That's just the indirect cause. The direct cause is actually being in the car accident. Uh, but yes, unfiltered aquarist, the more info that better yes i do agree with that which is which um let me get to the next slide here which uh basically this this in infographic i believe is a very great infographic on that which is the very the second line right there on the checklist please always give as much info as you can i fully agree with that but what i don't agree with is the people just coming out and saying, okay, what are your water parameters? We need your water parameters to actually judge the issue, <laughs> which of course could be a complete lie, which could totally just be a complete lie. They could be, they could just be fudging it because they don't want to show what their tank is. Um, which definitely could just be a complete lie. Um, I know you're you're on there. You're 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 not going to want to say that you're a bad aquarist. Um, so they're just going to fudge the numbers anyways. I I think the true way to actually help these people is actually okay. Look look at look at the illness. Okay, what what do you think it is? If you think it's a water parameter issue, I mean I know there's some water parameter issues that can be a direct issue. Like if you have ammonia burn, you definitely want, okay, you might need just, okay, what, what is the ammonia levels in that tank? You have nitrate poisoning. Those are direct causes that are directly related to water parameters. Something like ick, something like having ick is not necessarily a direct cause from having bad water parameters, which having that is not, it's not really related to actually helping the person. Of course, when you're doing when you're doing actually helping, okay, here's how you fix it. Then, then what you want to do is you want to say, okay, you want to treat it with X, you want to treat it with this medicine, you want to have a higher temperature, you use salt, but you know what? You also want to have 
clean water parameters, you want to make sure you have clean water as well. That has nothing to do with actually helping uh, by asking. Um, one thing you're just, I think a lot of it is actually detrimental to actually asking for the water parameters because people are going to be basically less likely to ask for help because they're going to be ashamed. They're not going to want to go with the whole water testing, although they probably should to begin with. Um, and these fishy friends, the big issue with people saying the water parameters are fine is fine is different to everyone. That's the other issue as well. I mean, water parameters are going to be different for different people, different test kits. I've, I've, I've touched on this with a previous video. Um, when I talk about the water parameter testing, Ben Ochart, he's touched on this as well, which for water parameters are going to be different by the test kit that you're using your technique. It's, it's going to be all over the place. Look at the nitrate testing. Um, I've done, I've done water testing with the API master kit where I get 40, 80 on the API and I'd use a different test kit. I was getting 20. So water parameters are going to be different for everyone, whether it be their water testing or basically, okay, some people think, okay, 40 nitrates is going to be fine. I think 40 nitrates is fine. Other people are like, okay, no, you must have it at five. You must have it at 10, which if, if you're fighting that, you're going to be at a losing battle in a lot of places because their water is going to have five to 10 nitrates to begin with. You're not going to get those nitrates down unless you're using RO, RO water and, and you're just fighting a losing battle. But uh, what, what what do you really what what are your thoughts on it? I mean, do you really really need to give the water parameters? I mean, I I don't think it's required, but like a, like everything, the more info the is the better. Uh, I think better. I think the better options that you really really need to know is okay. Did you add any fish recently? Okay. Did you add any more decorations? I mean, this is why I do like this check checklist right here, where it does go down to okay, what is your complete stock? That's going to be helpful. Uh, just like Unfiltered Quares just said, it also depends on stocking out of the variables. Like, do you have live plants What for what your nitrate level is? Exactly. I mean, if you have a heavily planted tank, uh, a high nitrate level at a particular time might not be a bad thing because your, your plants eventually will eat that nitrate, uh, which is why I do like this slide right here. Uh, okay. Because I, th I think a lot of this bottom line right here is basically more important than knowing what the actual water parameters are. Um, like, what is your feeding like? Uh, how often do you water changes? What ferts do you use? Did you recently change anything? That's going to be more important than, okay, what is your water parameters? Because if you have a nice stable tank, running at 40, 80 nitrates is, for most people, it's not going to be a big problem. Whereas if, if you change something, like if you change a different fert, if you use a different brand fert, um, how long it has the tank been running, uh, what recent changes can be the big thing. Okay, what new fish have you added? Um, what what new decor have you thrown in there? Um, what else? I mean, there's a lot of different things that are going to be more important than to knowing than, okay, what is the nitrate level? Um, I, I know some people who run high nitrate levels and all, all of a sudden they fix the nitrate level. So I think it would go from like 80 nitrates and they put fish into water with 10 nitri nitrates and all of a sudden the fish all die off because they're not used to the low nitrate levels. Same, same goes the other way. I mean, if you're putting fish from a 10 nitrate level aquarium over to one that's running 40, 80, that might cause issues as well, which then that, that could be a direct cause of the water parameters. Uh, but anyway, since since uh, Bob Kaler is apparently uh, going live right now, I'm probably going to cut this short. But I'm going to go ahead and go with the uh, – since I pretty much touched on my thoughts on the issue anyways. Um, but I'm going to go over with my latest news. So for anyone who's watching this after the fact, um, I am getting back into the T-shirt business. Now, of course, this is an old, old, old ancient shirt that, that I did. Uh, this is probably like over a decade old. But I am um, basically getting back into the t-shirt business primarily to help support this YouTube channel that I have. So I'm actually going to have my own merchandise um, coming up. I'm just waiting on something to get finished. But I don't know. I, I probably mentioned this previously that I 
have a new logo coming up. Uh, that's the primarily big news here, which I'm going to be able to actually put on some merchandise. So if you want to buy some T-shirts and stickers, you can for me. Uh, that way it helps support my channel here, helps support my keeping of the fish. That way I can afford actually buying food for them. Not that I can't afford buying food for them, but any of, any of course, any help is definitely helpful. Might as well feed the fish while I'm at it here. Um, so that's basically, I, I haven't quite figured out what service I'm going to be using. I'm kind of, I am kind of going between a couple. Uh, basically, I want to make sure I have a good quality print. Um, that's also reliable. Um, I do have some, I do have some um, qualms about one way that I think is really good quality. That's going to be a good quality product, but I haven't quite, I haven't quite pulled the trigger on that yet. But then again, I'm still waiting for my new logo to be actually finished. I did uh, commission that out primarily because I am by no means a graphic designer. Um, I do have ideas that come up. This is an old, like I said, this is this is this right here is an old shirt. I've designed this years and years and years ago. Yes, learning to fish keep. I have a new logo in the works. I am I have it commissioned out. I'm just waiting for them to finish up. Uh, it's been a while, but I'm not I'm not in a rush right now to actually get it. Now I'm kind of more in a rush because I do want to get this new merchandise out. But then again, I'm still working on figuring out what platform I want to use. Um, <laughs> unfiltered aquarist, uh, laugh out loud. It's okay. I had my brother design mine. Th that is excellent work, by the way. I, I love your logo. Um, I don't know if you have mer merchandise yet, but you should definitely have merchandise. I do love that logo. Hopefully, hopefully the way that he designed it, hopefully it's large enough for a, um, merchandise, um, putting on merchandise. I know the current my my current logo right now it's not going to cut it because when I designed it apparently I shrunk it down and I don't have the original large format and I really don't think my um, current logo will really translate well into merchandise. Um, um, I wish I could find a link, but I'll, I'll I'll have to do that later. Just go through Teespring. Oh, okay. So Unfiltered Aquarius does have merchandise. Let's see here. Is that on Teespring? Uh, let me see here. Is that unfiltered chorus? Is it on Teespring? Let's see here. Let's see if I can find his apparel. Apparel, apparel, apparel. Search unfiltered Aquarius. Let's see if that pops up. Ah, yes. He does have merchandise. <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and post a link here. Hello, Joe Randonzo. You missed my whole talk. But right now I'm just talking about actually um, my new news. That I do have a new logo in the works. That I'm going to be producing some merchandise. I haven't figured out where to go through yet, uh, but... There's unfiltered. I, I posted a link to unfiltered aquarists, um, which is basically share screen, which is I, I I love his logo. He has one of the better logos out there, along with um, if you ever uh, watched uh, Otter Creek Aquatics, he has excellent he has excellent uh, merchandise as well. Um, do do do. Let's see if that posts. Yep, there's Unfilters Aquarius design. Uh, well, ask me about my fish. <laughs> but that's his Teespring. Um, how, how do you like, uh, how do you like, um, how do you like uh, Teespring? Um, I, I I have qualms about Teespring. I, I know I know a lot of YouTubers do you use uh, Teespring. I'm not too completely thrilled with the quality on the print, uh, but then that could be a lot of issues. Um, but I, I'll, I'll show you why. Give me, give me one second. I'll be right back.
Okay, I am a back. I'm I am back. Okay, let's see. Um, I love Kaler's logo. Had to get me a red dragonette. <laughs> yeah, Bob Kaler has a has a nice one as well. Um, but here here's here's why I have a uh, yeah. Um, Teespring takes a huge cut, but super easy. Yes, it is super easy. I have another way that's pretty easy as well, uh, which I'm thinking of right now, although I have some issues with um, how it's gonna work. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm gonna try it out, see how it goes. But this is one thing I don't like about uh, the Teespring quality. This is after a few washes. I do wash, I do wear these, I still wear these. Uh, but I, I don't know if you could see that well. See how the black is? It's kind of fading off. Although black is going to be a hard, hard color to actually do in designs. This, of course, is Otter Creek's original shirt design. Um, as you can see, I mean, it started on. It started to fade out on this, on this one. I don't know. It could be the shirt quality. Could be, uh, could be the uh, issue that. I, of course, I mean these these print on demand shirt companies. It's going to be the issue. Is over time. It's not the best quality. It's not like. Um, the other way, um, yep. I think most use Teespring just to get the merch out there. Yeah, that's 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 the one thing they just wanted to use Teespring just to get the merch out. Um, there's other there's other sites as well. I'm also thinking. I'm also considering Redbubble. Um, I haven't quite, um, but I, there's another one that I'm probably going to go with. Um, I'm not going to really unveil that. I'm probably going to go with that one. Although it's it's going to be more more intense in terms of having to rely on myself, um, that's the difference between silk screening and or heat transfers. Screening looks better, but costs about three times the amount. Um, I really don't think um, the screening the screening isn't really the cost factor. I think you get some good pricing on that. The problem with that is, is you need the quantity. Um, if you have the means to actually go out there and order them, hold the inventory. <laughs> like if you buy 500 shirts from it, hold the inventory until you actually sell 500 shirts. That's that's a pretty cost. It's pretty cost effective and it looks nice. The issue is, is a lot of. I, I really don't want to go that route because I don't want to have to buy the 500 t-shirts and have that sitting around. Not to mention, okay, I have to have a certain amount small, a certain amount medium, which is why a lot of people do go with the print on demands because they don't have to have, they don't need the large quantity. Uh, they don't need the um, large inventory. They don't have to really deal with the shipping. Uh, with print on demands, you don't have to Basically, you just send them out to the print-on-demand site, and next to it, they do all the work for you. They send it out. They deal with the customer service. Um, another route I'm probably going to go. I'm probably going to have to deal with more customer service, but it's small. I'll see how it goes. This, of course, is Otter Creek's newer design, which actually I think came out nicer. It could be the sure quality that he chose on this time around. Um, that would be heat transfers. Um, Hmm. What would what would be heat transfers? Are you talking about print on demands? Um, because I, I know some print on demands they actually print directly to the shirts. Uh, they they do have printers out there now which actually just print right onto the shirt. Um. Uh, Joe, uh, what are you talking about heat transfers? Uh, are you talking about like the uh, huge quantities? Okay. But I, I know uh, same thing. <laughs> I I know I know with Cafe Press, this is this this is one of the shirt designs I designed years and years over a decade ago on Cafe Press. I've for 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 being for being over a decade old, I think this still looks good. I mean, it's not going to be one of the shirts where I want to walk around town with and and showing off the good quality that I made, but. <laughs> um, but I just want to make sure I have a decent quality that's going to last a little bit um, with the with the right features. Um, I'm actually considering right now Printful or maybe Printify, uh, which actually rely, which are print on demands, but more rely on actually having a shop attached to it where they don't have their own shop for you. I know, I know with Teespring and Redbubble, they have their own shop. 
I just think I just think from from my research, Printful and Printify have better quality than what you find on Teespring and um, Redbubble. Um, but definitely, definitely leave me your thoughts. Uh, Teespring is another option I might go with. Uh, I just I just haven't really put a finger on it yet, which way I really really want to go. But I think a lot of it is depending on really really where I want to go with the t-shirt designing business. <laughs> Primarily, I do want to use it for my YouTube merchandise, but I might actually post different designs up there as well, which are probably fish related. Um, if we can afford it or it's on demand, it's heat transfers. Printing directly on the shirt is the same technology. Okay. Okay. So, but I definitely have to figure this out. Um, this is one thing I'm still, still, still in a massive research phase. Um, I, I wish I could afford really my own printing business. <laughs> uh, probably be easier in terms of making sure I have the quality down, but I probably don't have the time for that or nor the money to invest in that. So I'm going to go with the printer. I just haven't decided whether I want to stick with the Teespring just like everyone else is doing, going with Redbubble, or like I said, going with Printful. I'm probably leaning more towards Printful and actually selling on Bonanza with that because they do directly integrate with Bonanza. Um, but definitely leave me, leave me your thoughts, whether it be in this live chat right here or if you're watching this later, put that down below in the comments. Um, I might actually do multiple, multiple, I might do multiple marketplaces just to put it out there, um, but I just have one main one. Um, but anyways, thanks, thanks for joining me. I'm probably gonna go head out and probably get ready for my day. I do have a lot of other things that I do need to take care of today. Um, stop, thanks, thanks for stopping by. Uh, keep researching and keep learning and happy fish keeping. Thank you.